In ancient China, humans wondered who would protect them from haunting evil spirits and demons invading their towns. In a time where the world was a big and scary place, and where myths and legends reigned supreme in the lives of ancient humans, the legend of the Chinese Fuda came about in our darkest hour to protect us all for all of time. For generations, humans have been telling stories, tales, and legends about creatures found all around the world. From the griffin to the chupacabra, and from the leviathan to the Chinese dragon, it's high time we set out an adventure to learn about them all. This is an expedition for the mythological. Welcome to Mythos Safari. It's noble, it's loyal, it's protective. The Foo Dog. It's the symbolism of what human beings feel towards our canine allies, and it might just be one of the most famous mythological creatures in East Asian culture. Before we get into this, I want to remind you guys to subscribe and become a member to the channel. It'll go a long way to helping us if you join this channel. We'd really appreciate it. But the story goes like this. The food dog can be seen throughout China, Japan, India, Korea, and many more countries on the Asian continent. From ornaments to keychains, and in almost every temple you will find two imperial guardian lions at the front of the gate before you walk in. In actuality, this is not a dog at all. Westerners thought that these creatures looked very similar to dogs and coined them the term foo dogs, when in fact, no one in China calls them that. Only in the 16th century did this term come to be when the Western world was first introduced to this mythical creature. To these uneducated Westerners, they looked more like a dog than a lion. They are known in China as the mighty guardian lions, stone lions, shi shi, or bronze lion, tong shi and are a beloved mythical creature that protects its people from all evil spirits. The Legend The story goes that thousands of years ago, during the Han Dynasty of China, lions were introduced to the country. The newly paved Silk Road made trade possible between Central Asia and Persia. This brought in non-native lion populations all the way to China. Emissaries brought the first ever lion to the royal court of China, where the emperor himself was starstruck by the majesty and beauty of this animal. He'd never seen anything like this before. The emperor was so impressed that he had tombs and ornaments made in the shape of lions as a sign of protection between the physical and spiritual realm. The lions brought to China at the time were strictly male, as they were more aggressive and majestic looking with their manes. The emperor and other nobles only knew of the maned male lions and not the female lioness. And as such, the Chinese believed that both male and female lions must look the same, but with different genitalia. So when the Song Dynasty came about, the guardian lions became gendered. This is the era where things, in my opinion, get a bit more beautiful and spiritual. The idea of balance in the world started taking a stronger stance in society, and order became an integral part of everyday life. Everything had to be harmonious. If things became unbalanced, the world would fall apart. This in turn changed the way that the two spiritual lions were depicted. No longer were they just genderless statues that protected temples, they had evolved to become male and female, one that completes the other, yin and yang, which we see as a common theme for many mythological and religious concepts in Chinese history and mythology. The male lion was made to hold a ball, it is said that the ball represents the world having the strength and power to bring order to our planet. And mathematicians have actually studied the patterns used on these balls that most male guardian lions hold throughout temples around the world. And they made a note that the patterns are actually small mathematical structures which combine to form a solid sphere. On the opposite end, the female lion represents the quality of chaos and she is depicted with a cub that is underneath her paw. It is explained that newborns are hard to handle. They scream, they cry, they cause chaos everywhere and throw the balance of life upside down. However, it could be looked at as the most perfect being of the two opposing forces of chaos and order. The cub is the spitting image of their parents and also learns from their mistakes, ultimately finding the perfect balance of chaos and order. The Shishi were no longer just a pair of majestic guards that protected the people from evil spirits. During the Song Dynasty, they had taken a big turn where Buddhism was losing its popularity and new philosophies started to emerge. During the Ming and Qing Dynasties, the two lions went through a further makeover, turning the ferocious beats like creatures into a more docile and friendly looking puppy. And apparently, the Chinese also had a small dog breed that still exists today called the Pekingese. The Pekingese was bred and carefully groomed to look like the descriptions the Chinese had heard of lions and the food dog statue. These guys came to represent the protective power of the Buddha, so they had a bunch of adorable little Buddha spirits running around. The Present In many temples found in and around East Asia, Central Asia, South Asia, and Southeast Asia, these two lions are placed in the entrance of holy sites 
in a plethora of important locations. They still hold the same importance they had thousands of years ago, to protect and serve the temples in which people go to pray and ward off evil spirits. The Lion Guardians are also placed in front of imperial palaces, tombs, government offices, and homes of wealthy powerful people. They have become a core part of society and a way for people to be connected and flow with the environment around them, a concept called feng shui. Whenever making these videos, I scour the internet and friends from the countries relevant to the mythology I'm talking about to find out the stories behind the origins of these amazing mythical creatures. The food dog actually really got me scratching my head. I haven't been able to find anything even remotely close pointing towards its origins in mythology. Nothing beyond the claim we spoke about earlier, that the Asiatic lion was brought to China during the development of the Silk Road, but I wasn't satisfied with just that answer. Truly, the only thing I could find was in some random English blogs about the Chinese lion dog. They say that in Chinese mythology, the Fu Dog is a mythical creature that originated from a boy's stone dog toy, supposedly brought to life by a god. The problem is I couldn't verify its origins, whether it was in India or China or anywhere else. I just honestly like to imagine that there's some incredible story out there for me yet to discover about this animal and tell you guys on this channel someday. Through my many travels in Asia, I have seen this lion dog, this food dog, depicted in so many amazing temples I've visited. I've seen it in art and in culture, through my time in Japan, Korea, Sri Lanka, India, and there's no doubt that these lions represent power in our lives today. And these dogs represent a sense of loyalty and security for us humans. I think at first glance when we look at the food dog, the thing might even seem a bit scary or imposing, especially for a young child. But understanding that the ancient Chinese system of balance is why they are around us, and rather than be a danger to us, they are here to protect and serve us and make us feel more secure. It's something that makes me feel so happy inside. I hope that you guys choose to subscribe and join to become members on our channel. It'll go a really long way to supporting us and help us make more amazing videos just like this one. We'll see you on the next safari. Goodbye.